So here's my uh, tea cabinet. I've shared it before. It's a little bit a mess, but as I get ready to uh, do another tea testing, I want to show you what dangerously low means and how I store my tea. So these, um, like one of these has only, this one only has like one uh, tea serving left in it. And I have some uh, three flavored ones up here, but that's all the tea I have left. I love uh, putting the tea in uh, these uh, jars uh, because I can actually see the tea. That's not the way you're supposed to <laughs> store tea. Um, because the light um, will oxidize the tea and um, change it. But as long as you drink it up before you um, let it get bad, um, it's okay. But anyway, this is what dangerously low tea levels are like. And um, when I try my new teas, I got 12 new teas. I won't move them to these jars and put them in my uh, cabinet until uh, I do my official tea tasting. So it's only gonna get lower <laughs> before it grows. So this is my first tea from Yunnan Sourcing. Um, there is a Yunnan sourcing website in the United States, and I didn't know that when I ordered. And uh, it came in a reasonable amount of time, a couple weeks. Um, and so especially around the, the holidays and the extra uh, traveling. And I love the packages are plain. I just don't like busy packaging. And so um, that is pretty awesome. And so here's the tea that I decided to try first. It was so hard to choose which one to do first. And lo and behold, I'm kind of glad I got this one out of the way. Oh, the learning that I have done. And I, <laughs> I'm going to share with you um, about that uh, and hopefully simplify it for you. Uh, but boy, boy, did I learn a lot. So this is a, it's this classic <laughs> Bai Lin Gong Fu Golden Monkey Black Tea of Fooding. Does that not sound like a lot? <laughs> so um, when we uh, begin to look at these, the Bai Lin is going to be important. The Gong Fu, ah, did I learn about that? and golden monkey oh the misconceptions that i've had and fooding is also a location by lynn is also a location so we've got a lot to get into here today with this one and uh my dog insists i hope that doesn't offend anybody but uh the other one is sleeping over here she's not really sleeping neither is her but they do like to snuggle with me on my window seat. So I just did this on my window seat. My husband kind of stood over me. So here is the tea, but let me pick this up so you can kind of see uh, the color. It's a classic brown colored tea. And here it is in my tasting cup. Classic brown. But here is the amazing, let me set this down, leaves. Now you can tell, oh, do you see those beautiful golden buds? I have really learned to appreciate golden buds. Buds would be the first little top that the bud, the leaf that has not come out all the way and um, then the first leaf and you can see the grand consistency in these leaves and the special care that has been taking into them now apparently that is supposed to look like a monkey claw uh, I guess more like a monkey tail I don't know uh, but um, so a lot of them aren't uh, turned uh, like that that might be a monkey claw but you can see how they are kind of uh, very consistent 
and let me get this one you see that's got the golden tip and this is a classic uh, roll and there's many pieces like this very nice and tight um, I've kind of learned to recognize this tea um, very much like the the first time I had it was a version from a Nepal and I really really liked it so then we go down to uh, the wet so you can kind of see what it looks like after it was uh, brewed this is the second infusion um, so the leaves that are it's definitely much uh, much more beautiful in the am I the only one that picks my tea apart in the uh, uh, dried version than than the wet I've seen much prettier wet leaves but definitely still looks like good leaves so let's go up to my notes as always and uh, review them in my one note I'm gonna close this curtain so we have less light coming in so um classic buy-in gong fu golden monkey black and fooding it's from yunnan sourcing there is actually today's date it was so hard to choose which tea to do first so fooding i got this off of that link right there um is in the fujian province of china and you see it is located right there this is not all of china this shape is the shape of the fujian province and so that's where fooding is located in the fujian province so um, here's some notes i'm not going to read all of this stuff that i got off that website you can pause and read if you want or go to the website there is what the mountains look like. I just thought that was just beautiful. So I went ahead and went to Google Maps. And uh, this is, you know, the large country of China. And where the red dot is over here is where uh, the fooding is. Um, and it is in the... Uh, province in the shape above and then I zoomed in closer and that is the city of Fuding uh, right there of course it's in the larger province that's only the uh, tip top of that like where it's pointing so that was fun to investigate um, I saw one website that gave a nice description of the processing uh, of course, they pick it, they wither it, um, rubbing, I'm not sure what that is, decomposition, fermentation, and baking. Now, I was um, intrigued that they do fermentation because that's kind of more what you get with a puer. So I didn't quite know about that, but I had so much studying to do. It took me forever, um, <laughs> let's say just hours, to Google and research this. So... First, let's look at the terms golden monkey. Now, in my book, uh, I've shared uh, in my other video my project of trying every tea in the book that I have. Um, in my book, this is the only reference to golden monkey. So I thought that this was some really special uh, kind of tea. <laughs> oh. My con my my preconception is blown out of the water. So, a golden monkey tea refers to any tea originating in the Fujian or the Yunnan provinces. Do you know how many teas come out of that? You know how many teas I've already tasted that come out of them provinces? I mean, really, seriously. <laughs> so... It says here, the name Golden Monkey can be used for many black teas. <laughs> oh, you got that right. Because when I went and I Googled it, 
Do you know how many teas out there that you go buy that are named Golden Monkey? They just, it's like they just slap that on there to uh, make it sound like it's a special tea. So don't be fooled by the name Golden Monkey. That's my lesson learned. <laughs> It is so wildly used. It's not really that uh, special of a tea. However, this tea is special, but for another reason. Um, from the website of Yunnan Sourcing, it says this is by how, I think that's how it said, varietal tea leaves. Okay, and it's made from uh, one bud semi-tippy grade and one leaf. So uh, that's a high quality tea in and, in and of itself. Um, the process allows the golden orange furry tips. Now I didn't get furry, but you'll see later I did get uh, that this tea is very, uh, got a lot of, uh, oh, what's the word? Sometimes I can't remember the words. Uh, down here, body. A ah, lot of body. We'll get to that. So um, that makes sense now that I go back up here and uh, read uh, these notes that um, that it is uh, got furry tips. So I've learned from other teas that that furry actually gives it a lot of body. I, um, so... Um, it says it's, uh, sweet, I don't know what vicious, visquis is, fruity and floral, and it says, um, imperial grade, uh, spring harvest, mid-April harvest, so here it is January, so this would have been, uh, probably April, um, of 2020 so this tea is actually very old but what i wanted to say is uh to this i'm i'm shocked i'm impressed these packages i opened the box and i thought from previous experiences of orders i would just get overwhelmed with this tea smell and i just delight in it and there was no smell no smell at all coming out of this box. These things are like, um, they suck the air out of them, out of their packaging, and they're sealed so tight. Uh, I've not had a tea order from anywhere else that is sealed like that. Um, that was impressive. I, w I was impressed with that. So back to the notes. Um, the book that I have, which my tea project, uh, and why I ordered this one, uh, it was my intention to order a Tan Yang Gong Fu Golden Monkey. Um, no, it's not tang, Tan Yang, it's Bao Lin. So I was immediately like, oh, wait, <laughs> I, I have to get a Tan Yang yet. So this tea is actually not in my book anywhere. I thought it was since they both said Golden Monkey, but... Um, I need to pay attention to the first letters instead, the first words instead. So I looked it up, and I looked it up, and I looked it up. <laughs> so Tan Yang is actually uh, uh, a Tang, Tan Yang village in the Baiyun Mountains of Fujian province. So it's the same province, but it's so... I figured out, finally, it's a location. And I figured out later, as you're going to see in later notes, Bai Lin is also a location. And Bai Lin, this one here says, the, I had to go to so many websites and get notes to grasp uh, all of this. Um, uh, we learned uh, from their website up here that it is a white tea. And I said, well, what does that mean? White Pico, what, what does that mean? Here, this other website um, down here was really helpful. Um, first, this website, uh, white tea may, means for, it's from the leaves of either the da, da Bai Chai or the Da Bai how and from the website up here 
we learned it was by how. So there are, two, in fooding, the white variety of leaves, the cultivar of the Camellia sensa plant is either a Dabai da, da Chai or Dabai da Hao. And this one is the Dabai Hao. And the Dabai Hao is from this mountain range here, Ta Taimu. You know, I don't know how to pronounce all of these things. So I looked that up and it is right here. And it actually looks like that. This is from Google Maps. Isn't that awesome looking? So, and, and, and it's actually a little further out from the coast. So apparently that is where this, um, by Lynn is, I don't know, but I know it looks pretty cool. Um, the brand, the, uh, variety I don't have was, is, uh, newer 1985. The by Lynn has been around f since 1850 pretty cool. So this website was actually the most helpful, this one here. So the by Lynn is handmade specialty tea from the young buds of the, see that Dai Ba Chow or Big White tea variety. So that's the, the cultivar of the Camellia sensus plant. And this same plant is used to make yin zhuin or silver needle, which I have already tasted. So this same plant, this is why they call it white, because that is a white tea, silver needle. And so they take this exact same plant leaf that we have here, and they process it into silver needle, or they process it into this black hope that makes sense. And they also process it into a green jasmine pearl. Bai Lin um, has a distinctive fuzz. So it mentions the fuzz again, which gives it lots of body. And Bai Lin refers to a village around the district. So that's where I got that it was a location. Now here, this website also mentions, and so does other websites, that there are three famous Gong Fu teas. We're going to get into what Gong Fu is later. Um, produced, and one of them is the Bai Lin. You see I have them bolded. One is the Tan Yang that I thought I was getting, but I didn't get. And one is the Zing He. So, there, so I need to get the other two and compare. But um, these three are the famous, and I've seen this met, referenced on many websites, uh, Gong Fu teas from the uh, foodie, food, food, fooding area. Man, see how much this is? This is another uh, website that mentioned the same thing. They had a lot of spelling errors, which I've tried to correct, but you see they also mention that there is the three. And then uh, this is how more often I see the county uh, mentioned, but that's where the third one is. So this website here also mentions the three. Famous. But down here at the bottom, I tried to highlight in blue so I would know what to put out. I'll look at the Tam Yang is also known as Pan Yang Kongu. I'm going to have to get that one. And there's the other Gong Fu. So, um, historically been a revered tea because of the attention to detail in production, which is why it is called Gong Fu. So Gong Fu indicates that the tea is well made due to mastery and discipline. So um, from this website, while it is also called Gong Fu, the term is not to be confused either with martial art, which is written differently in Chinese, 
or the style of brewing that is called Gong Fu Cha. Gong Fu in Chinese means time and effort. So it is not a surprise that it is used to describe the following time consuming tea making techniques. So these teas are ones that are special that are made by um, uh, the tea masters that really know what they're doing, that have learned their craft over many, many years. And they take a long time to uh, create uh, this very special tea. So uh, another website said Kung Fu is a romanization of Gong Fu. And so that's why the uh, this website up here mentioned it. Uh, so it's not to be confused with Kung Fu fighting. And of course, I had to go, go look it up on YouTube and listen to it. There's a song by Carl Douglas called Kung Fu Fighting that I remember from the 70s. And is this like not showing my age? <laughs> and, you know, you remember the Bruce Lee movies in the 1970s. So... It is not to be, I didn't know I was going to be learning about Kung Fu fighting today, but I didn't realize these were all related. So there's three things. Okay, so Kung Fu, like that, means time expended on a task, workmanship, skill gained through long effort and application of prolonged practice. So um, that is... Gong Fu that looks like that in Chinese and then right underneath it you see the other Gong Fu written a little bit differently which means workmanship skill art or craft of the type of martial art so um, so you have martial art and then the top one you have your tea ceremony and then you also are your tea making and then Gong Fu is also referred to as the tea ceremony so that's what is so confusing. When I first read Gong Fu, I thought it re it referred to the way it was brewed, like something I was going to do. So I was highly, highly confused. <laughs> so Gong Fu Tea Ceremony or Kung Fu Tea Ceremony off of Wikipedia is literally means making tea with skill, such as your water temps, the vessel you use, the brewing time. So I thought... Gong Fu, <laughs> you can see my notes here. It was really funny to me because I thought Gong Fu was using a Gai Wan, like I have down here, this Gai Wan, but it's not. It has to do with the whole ceremony, uh, according to the Wikipedia, the um, the pouring the water over the trays that have the holes that go down and the tea pets and all that stuff that I don't adopt. I just adopt the... Um, uh, using the science of the Gaiwan and having more leaves and brewing it for less time. But, <clears throat> so you have three things for Gong Fu. You have the martial arts. You have what this tea means. That, and there's apparently three of them that are famous. Um, that the uh, workmanship, the time and skilled uh, making of this tea, which makes it special. And then you also have uh, the brewing, the way it's brewed. So that word gong fu has three meanings. I learned that today. <laughs> Hopefully you have too. This is becoming a long video, but hey, I uh, took a long time to learn all of these things. So let's look back at the package again. Bai Lin is a location in Fuding or near Fuding in China. So both of those refer to a location. Gong Fu refers to um, these three teas that are made uh, by uh, taking a careful, special time to make them. And then Golden Monkey is also referencing a location, but a much general, much more general location of those two counties. So here's my tasting notes. Um, color brown on that spectrum. Brown right there. Uh, 
I smelt it. When we smelt it, I was so glad to finally get to smell it. I waited for a long time studying before I got to drink this tea. Um, it's airy and light, uh, very airy and light, the, the dry leaves. And um, I do not often get the fruit when it's listed, but that's certainly what jumped out at me this time. My first thought was raisin, but then I read the notes from the website and realized it had said honey peach. And I was like, oh yeah, that's accurate too. It smells much like the grilled peach from the tea from Mississippi, uh, the state of Mississippi in the United States that I tried. You can go look at those tasting notes. Um, and I think having that tea helped me to understand what peach references in uh, tasting notes are like. See, I keep learning more and more and more. So it's not that it tastes like uh, raw peach, like I usually eat peaches, but it's definitely that grilled peach. And the wet leaves smelled so good. I could just sit and smell those. Um, and the grilled peach really come down, came out uh, in the wet leaves. And look at those golden buds. I loved them. So we were quite, quite surprised at the body. I mean, I, I always try to, we taste together with my husband and, um, you know, I try to come into my head what I think it is. And then I ask him what he think it, thinks it is. And I compare and we both immediately said full body. Now there's a very full category, uh, but um, I did cho choose uh, full, but it might be very full. It hit us both immediately, and I guess that's from what it keeps talking about, the fuzz on the leaves. I guess that's what it is. I don't know. Uh, astringency, you all know I don't like it. Delicate, that's the lowest category. Very low. I absolutely loved that. Um, the taste... Like the grilled peach, it tasted like it smelled. Um, I did lose any sense of honey. Um, I have uh, had other teas that that have kept the sense of honey, and I've lost that. Uh, but definitely, it tasted like it smelled. And I also did get that classic tea flavor that I always have trouble describing <laughs> and that was kind of a secondary flavor um, and I think that's often described as malty or that muscatel that raisin that um, they say so many teas have that muscatel um, flavor and I think I finally got it today <laughs> I think I got that I was like happy um, that I finally you know, understood that, what it tastes like. Now I may begin to recognize it more often. So if you are tasting teas, keep at it, keep at it, keep taking notes, um, keep analyzing and trying new ones because eventually I think you'll get it because the more I do it, the more I get it. <laughs> um, so this one really reminded me of a Golden Buds tea that I had from Nepal in 2019. I got that at at the Chicago Tea Festival. It was one of my favorite teas. And I really liked it. And this one tastes very much like that. I don't have tasting notes on that Nepal because it was not in my book. <laughs> so I didn't write it down, but I have it in my head. Very much like that one. And uh, this is, and that one was rated high. This uh, finish is lingering and aromatic, and I gave this four and a half hearts because I would not mind having it on hand all the time. I really wouldn't. I really, this is this was a good one, guys. Long video, sorry, but I hope you learned a lot because I did. I learned about the three types of gong fu. I learned three different meaning the, the three different types of tea, the tang, whatever, and the bai lin and the other one. So I have to try all three. I learned what gong fu meant. I learned what go, uh, golden monkey meant. I learned where fooding was. Um, and I learned I like this tea. <laughs>
file.